Welcome to San Antonio, Texas, as we're all set for midweek baseball between two of the top 15 teams in the nation. It's the ETBU Tigers and the Trinity Tigers. As for Trinity, Carter Aldman is on the mound as we get things going with ball one. You see the ERA on your screen, a whopping 54, but that's only through not even an inning, Luke. Yeah, he's made a couple of appearances on the season for these Trinity Tigers. And you can see there just one out recorded in those two outings. And getting the start here off of a game last night in Austin, Texas. Trinity coming off a loss against the Concordia University Tornadoes. A big question coming into today how the Tigers are going to use their resources from their pitching staff. So many guys throwing yesterday. Aldman gets the first crack at it as that's tapped foul. Makes it two and two. Yeah, and just continued changes to this pitching staff and bullpen as this season has continued along. You're right, coming off a game yesterday where quite a few arms were used and then of course, in these weekend series now as these Trinity Tigers are in the conference play having started this past weekend against the University of Southwestern. Some arms in that rotation that have been in and out over the course of the season, some expected starters that haven't been able to go for Trinity, certainly has changed the staff and the approach in these midweek games as well. Now a 3-2 count to Massamini, and he loses him, the leadoff man aboard with a walk as Connor Massamini takes first base. Yeah, not the start you want to see from Carter Altman on the mound, especially considering the aggressiveness and the offensive capacity of this ETBU squad. Wouldn't be shocked to see Massimini on the move very quickly here in San Antonio. So now he faces the number two hitter, Evangelista. Working with nobody out and a runner on first. Squares up to bunt, but the play blown dead. And it looks like they call a balk as Massimini takes second. And perhaps the early square from Evangelista right there, getting into the head of Aldman just a tad as he certainly had a little extra movement before he made that delivery home. Another freebie handed out to this Tiger team. Tiger counterparts, I should say. And all of a sudden, now a runner in scoring position. Yes, two Tigers playing in this game, ETVU and Trinity. Two teams growing increasingly familiar with each other as we'll get into that as the broadcast continues. Still nobody out, runner on second is Massimini, who you see in your frame, as that's fouled off. It's ETBU lineup filled with plenty of good hitters. Jacob Evangelista, one of them. However, he's very dangerous if he gets on base, second in the country in stolen bases with over 20 already. As an early meeting from Dave Smith and the catcher Matthias Writing. Yeah, and interesting to see it after Aldman comes back and starts this at bat off by getting ahead. Evangelista being able to foul that pitch off. I think certainly some nerves that have to be going through the mind of the Trinity pitcher on the mound right now. First start of this year, only his third appearance now. Realistically, kind of at the midway point of things. Said for the longest time, early portion of this season, but how this year has already flown by as this weekend they'll head into their second conference affair of the season. Things continuing to be worked through here in San Antonio realistically from this pitching perspective. Yeah, Dave Smith talked about how this schedule is going to be so taxing on the pitching staff. You think about back-to-back -back games, midweek games, where you're using most of your high leverage arms throughout the weekend. Not a lot of room for error on Tuesday, especially on Wednesday as Altman fires strike one, or strike two, I should say. Yeah, and more than anything, considering the balk that happened after the first batter reached, I think Coach Smith venturing out there, trying to settle the nerves just a little bit, redirect the focus back to the batter in the box. Outside makes it one and two. Evangelista making his 19th start of the season. He's hitting 306 on the year. 
as are so many of these Tigers in the ETBU lineup. Pitch outside evens the count at two apiece. Two two pitch from the first year. Fouled off and Evangelista stays alive. Yeah, and Evangelista doing a nice job in this at bat, watching a couple of pitches. Aldman seemingly made them rather competitive, but certainly a lot of experience in this ETBU lineup. We're gonna see it. A lot of familiar names for Tiger fans who have followed this team for the last several seasons. In there, strike three. He gets Evangelista looking, and it's the first strikeout of the day for Carter Aldman. And we'll see on the replay right here, Matias Riding, who's making his first start of the year behind home plate for this Trinity team, does an excellent job of framing this pitch, bringing it back up into the strike zone. And was very, very quick with his hands right there, and I think it's a big reason that Aldman ultimately got that strike three call. Is now one down, still the runner on second. High and inside, we'll try and get a replay of that last player, folks in the control room working so hard to bring you this midweek action. Still nothing, nothing in the top of the first. Battle between these two Tigers from Texas. So that pitch is outside to make it two and zero. Oh. It's Landon Durden in the batter's box and you see the replay of that strike three call there. Exactly what you were saying, Luke, the frame job, able to bring it back into the zone to collect the first out. Yeah, just so quick with that hand, going down with the glove and then snapping it up right as he receives it. And that hit him. So Durden takes first, and now two runners aboard with only one down for ETBU. And it was a nice job from Aldman settling in against Evangelista to get the strikeout. And certainly there against the three-hole hitter with a runner in scoring position. Feels like the nerves and the situation being felt yet again, ultimately not wanting to throw anything right over the heart of the plate. I think you can live with that end result, putting someone over at first base when that base was unoccupied to begin with. And now Nicholas Chavez enters the game. An opportunity for ETBU to take the early lead. Foul tip into the catcher's glove, strike one. Nice to see Aldman come right back at Chavez here in this four hole, especially with that double play ball intact. I think this is exactly what you want to see from these arms. A little further down in the bullpen, come in, throw a lot of strikes, be willing to pitch to contact. Runner goes, but it's fouled off. As ETBU tried to pull the double steal, they'll have to go back. But two runners aboard working with a very hot hitter in Nicholas Chavez hitting cleanup today. Coming off a weekend that saw him hit two home runs in the same game against Howard Payne in a series that ETBU won in conference play. Yeah, and two in that series, five on the season, so certainly a lot of pop in the bat. Runners go, and the pitch gets away, so they would have taken those bases anyways. Now two in scoring position for East, Te East Texas Baptist. And a couple of pitches ago, you call out the double steal attempt, but also Chavez swinging at that, sending it the other direction, perhaps a hit and run that gets taken out of the equation right there considering how badly that piss, pitch missed up in the zone. There's strike three as he heads back to the batter's box. Didn't ring him up. Caused some confusion on my end, but there's two down in the inning. Still a chance for ETBU to take the early lead, though. Yeah, we've seen already this season on Tiger Network some home plate umpires that have not rung up the batter in the box and after the fact, you know, handed out some apologies. They haven't been entirely aware of the counts in these at-bats, but certainly with strike three, it's all been, again, doing a nice job of getting ahead. That pitch inside to Brett Wagner hitting 319 on the year. And you see the RBIs on your screen, 27 on the year. That very highly ranked in all of Division Three baseball. Pitch misses, and it makes it 2-0. and I mean, when you have guys in front of you like Massimini, 
Evangelista, Durden, Chavez, there's typically a lot of traffic on the base paths, especially when you add in Evangelista's ability to steal some bags, a lot of speed on the base paths for ETBU. Aldman trying to avoid giving up that early damage. He's had traffic pretty much all inning long and runner in scoring position on top of that. Wagner hitting 320 on the season. Swing and a miss. That evens the count at two and two. And a really pretty breaking ball right here from Aldman. Not something that we've seen very frequently in this inning, but certainly had Wagner well out ahead of it. Now a 2-2 pitch with two down. Misses and a full count. Yeah, looked like a similar pitch, maybe another breaking ball, this time finishing down. An easier job for Wagner to recognize that one. Two runners aboard, one by way of a walk, the other a hit by pitch. Outside ball four, it gets away, but Riding gets on top of it and holds the runner at third. So that'll juice the bases. Right in doing a nice job to scramble to that one quickly. Got a lot of leather on it. So he did just enough to keep it within reach. Massimini being forced to stay over there at third. But you're right, now these bases loaded. Aldman continuing a high pressure situation in the first. Pitch outside. As Hunter Ramachik in with the bases loaded. Doesn't get the call there, and it's 2-0. and oh. And we're going to have a meeting. We'll see if it's a change, and it is. That'll be the day for Carter Aldman. He leaves the game with the bases loaded, still in the top of the first as we'll get back to San Antonio after the change. New pitcher on the mound for the Tigers. It's Jonathan Newman comes in with a 1-0 record, an ERA below one. He's been one of the best relievers out of the pen this season for the Tigers, and he gets an opportunity here. Swing and a miss, strike one. Makes it two and one as the change was made mid at bat. Rumichik certainly anticipating fastball in the zone right there, just couldn't quite catch up to it. Outside three and one. You know, we've seen in the last few weeks pitchers get put in to 2-0 situations. We saw it yesterday as well, and then Joseph Shivana over the weekend. We'll see how that impacts Newman working 3-1. Strike two to make it a full count. Yeah, it's been successful and unsuccessful for these Tiger arms. You know, Will Helling's one of the relievers that's come into those situations. Swing and a miss, strike three. 
Newman gets the out and he's fired up. ETBU leaves him loaded and it's still nothing, nothing mid first. Welcome back to San Antonio, Texas. Nothing, nothing as we're in the bottom of the first. ETBU leaving the bases loaded. So now they come out in a scoreless game facing the leadoff man, Jack Peterson. First pitch inside for strike one. Peterson moving up in the order for this Trinity squad today. I believe the first time that he's hit leadoff for the Trinity Tigers this season. Pretty steady mainstay in this offense, but normally in that bottom half, hitting somewhere seven through nine. So he's facing Landry Powell the first year, making his second start of the season, his fifth appearance. Which is outside to make it one and two. Powell comes in with an ERA of 5.68. His last appearance was against these Trinity Tigers. He pitched three innings, three strikeouts, and only one earned run. That's outside to even the count at two apiece. But you bring up the point, Luke, about Jack Peterson not hitting in his normal spot. We've seen him at nine. We've seen him at seven. No higher than seven until today. Now in the leadoff spot. Outside brings it to a full count. Yeah, and he's facing Powell, who... Of course, as you just mentioned, he has a little bit of familiarity with Powell. Two starts on the year, that other appearance against Trinity being his second. Had a lot of success in three innings. Just got beat once by Colt Harris, who had quite a day in Marshall, Texas, leaving the yard three times. Swing and a miss from Jack Peterson, and there's one down in the inning. As it'll bring up the left fielder, the first year, Caleb Woodward. Harris is waiting on deck, so we will see that matchup again in this inning. For now, it'll be Woodward, who's inserted himself into this starting lineup in his first year. Didn't start that way, was mostly a pinch hitter. But once he got his first start, hit his first career home run, and he has taken off since then. Hasn't relinquished that starting role yet. Yeah, a lot of growth that Caleb Woodward will do here in San Antonio, certainly in his career. But already, it seems he has a bright future in front of him. Big. 6'3 or so outfielder who has very, very impressive speed, but also, as you noted, has some pretty impressive pop for someone coming in and playing just his first campaign of collegiate baseball. Foul tip into the glove is strike one to make the count two and one. Nobody on, one down in the inning. Nothing, nothing is the score. Fouled off, and that evens the count. Woodward trying to get aboard to set up Colt Harris, who's been as hot as anybody recently, the reigning SCAC hitter of the week, largely due to his performance against these ETBU Tigers. High and back-to-back -back full counts.
And Powell doing a nice job against Peterson to get the job done. Trinity using these left-handers at the top of the lineup. First time around didn't work out for him, however. And he loses him, ball four. And Woodward's aboard, he heads to first base. This time it does. Woodward doing a nice job. You fit after Powell came back to load that one up, make it a competitive at bat. Getting a base runner here for Trinity in the home half of the first inning. And as you mentioned, an opportunity to get one of the Tigers' hottest hitters into the batter's box. Woodward goes on the first pitch, but Harris swings and fouls it off out of play. So Woodward has to make the 90-foot walk back. Of course, talking about the pop in Colt Harris's bat, I have to mention overcast day here in San Antonio. The flags are flying out to dead center field. As he takes strike two, Harris hitting 320 on the year, a 620 slugging percentage. So he's been one of the most impressive Tiger hitters on the season also have four home runs, three of them in that one game, as you said earlier. Now an 0-2 count. Woodward goes again, no throw, and he slides into second safely, a stolen base for Caleb Woodward. Yeah, not a great pitch for Chavez to throw on behind home plate right there. Breaking ball on the outside, which I'm sure he likes, but finishes a little low, would have had to throw from his knees, and ultimately a little bit too much speed in Caleb Woodward. Harris ahead one, or down one and two, I should say. Pops that up and out of play. So we'll do it again at one and two. Colt Harris showing some real fight here in the three hole. Getting the little bit of promotion here today. Normally that six spot in this Trinity offense, but team that has struggled in their last two outings to generate runs and hits in general and needs his help right here. Fouled back near us. And we'll do it again, still one and two. For those of you who don't know, our usual setup in the classroom across from where our control room is, not at the field. Today we are at the field, working from the top of the Bell Center, I believe right over Calgar Gym. So we're getting to see the action firsthand as that pitch barely misses outside to make it two and two. Yeah, a really good pitch from Powell right here. From our vantage point, looked like it was a tighter breaking ball that finishes down and away to the right-handed Harris. Very good spot, very competitive miss. Just couldn't get Harris to start his hands and couldn't persuade the home plate umpire either. 2-2 two -two pitch with Woodward on second inside and three and two once again three hitters three full counts worked by these tigers and exactly what you want to do as an offense in the early portion of a game forcing powell to throw a lot of pitches giving a good opportunity to these guys standing waiting on the on deck circle to see exactly what he has high ball four back-to-back -back walks for Trinity and they have two aboard with one down. Yeah, and of course a strikeout to start the game. Not exactly what you want to see, but still a quality plate appearance to start things off from Jack Peterson. And I'm sure it's lent a little bit of a hand to Woodward and Harris who both come up, are willing to stand in there and see some pitches. And obviously it's paid dividends now as Trinity has something going seemingly in the home half. It's now Alex Monson, the DH up. Saw on your screen, Monson and OPS over 1,000. Hasn't gotten in a lot, because that's called strike one. But did leave the yard two weekends ago against UT Dallas, a game the Tigers ended up winning on a Sunday. as his only home run of the year. Now working with one out and runners on first and second. Low, and it's one and one. And another left-handed bat that gets his name called here in San Antonio, trying to find whatever advantages offensively Trinity Tigers are against a right-handed arm and Powell on the mound. Bluff off the backside as Woodward able to walk 
back to second. But you talk about the offense, and it's been a little inconsistent lately, particularly last night. They put up seven runs, but I believe fewer hits than runs on the board. They had a 5-2 lead, just couldn't get anything going as Monson fouls that back to make it 1-2. and two. Ended up losing that game 8-7. to seven. And then that Sunday game that you and Reed Rosales called against Southwestern, a 9-2 loss. Just nothing going offensively lately. Yeah, and in that 9-2 loss, I think it was 10 runners left on base, if not even more than that. Hit in the air to shallow left. And the catch is made for out number two as Monson is retired. And Burnaman not at all impacted by the gray overcast conditions here in San Antonio. Tracks back from his shortstop position rather easily to haul that one in. Now all of a sudden Powell only one out away from getting out of a little bit of a jam here in the first. Jack Baker trying to scratch some runs and trying to ultimately finish a job that Trinity was unable to do in that Sunday loss to Southwestern. Of course, they got runners in scoring position on base. They just couldn't bring them in. Two down, two on as Baker takes strike one. Tigers trying to avoid what their counterpart Tigers did just a half inning ago. ETBU leaving the bases loaded in the top of the first. Trinity trying to avoid leaving runners on in the bottom of the first as Baker grounds that to first. And the flip is made for out number three to end the inning. End of one in San Antonio, nothing, nothing. Both offenses with chances, no runs in. Welcome back to the Alamo City. Nothing, nothing between these two top 15 teams in Division Three baseball. Jonathan Newman back on the mound for Trinity as he faces Jacob Newland, who takes ball one. Newland, a first year, hitting 286 on the season. This is his fourth appearance of the year. Now a 2-0 count. Check swing, didn't go, and now it's 3-0. Newman able to get out of the last inning, came in with two down and the base is loaded. Gets the final out, now starts this inning as he fires strike one to extend this at bat. Yeah, not exactly the part of this ETBU order that you want to be issuing free passes to hit to right and we'll see for the call they say foul that's an interesting one Luke that looked like it was almost right on the line from our vantage point yeah certainly very very close but no real protest from this ETBU coaching staff or from Newland himself walks back to the batter's box right now and Newman has done a nice job in this at bat of at least getting it back to this full count situation not making it an easy opportunity for ETBU to get another leadoff runner on. Low ball four. So Newman battles back to a full count but can't finish the job and the leadoff man aboard for the Tigers. Yeah, now opens the door for the possibility that you're going to have to see the top of this order again. 
just in the second inning. Barring a double play ball in the middle of the infield, it's likely what's going to happen and what will await Newman in this inning. As Newman fires strike one. So that's Cameron French, the graduate student. French hitting 333 on the season as he works with the runner on first and fouls it off to make it 0-2. Good response by Newman right here, coming right at French after issuing that free pass. A big spot, hopefully come away with a strikeout, especially here, 0-2 in the count. Don't want to give him anything too good to hit. Need to remain competitive right around the zone. Way outside, good job by Riding to get his glove on that one and keep the runner at first. So that brings the count to one and two. Cameron French from Schoolcraft, Michigan, one of the few members of this ETBU team that isn't from the state of Texas. So we've seen Luke, Division Three baseball can be a very local thing. A lot of Texans on this Trinity roster as well. It's always good to see somebody from far away. As that's grounded third base side, Tinker makes the throw in time. The runner advances, and there's one down in the inning. And effectively a swinging bunt from French right there, well out in front of this pitch from Jonathan Newman. You can see it go off the end of his bat. Just not enough pace on it. Kai Tinker, only play he has is over at first base in the infield. Gets a job done of at least moving a runner over and, of course, takes off the board the potential for a double play. That's grounded to short. Baker swallows it and throws to first for out number two as Burnaman, the nine-hole hitter, is retired. Yeah, nice cut from Burnaman in this situation right here. Comes up and more or less barrels this baseball, breaking ball that's up in the zone. It had just enough movement on it, however, to force him just over the top of it. Unfortunately for him, it was hit right at Jack Baker. Sure-handed shortstop for Trinity this season. An easy enough play for out number two. Hit to left. Diving. And the catch made in left field. Caleb Woodward lays out and takes away a run to end the inning. Still nothing, nothing as we head to the bottom of the second. You're going to see this again because it's worth showing. Yeah, off the bat here, it felt like that one was getting down without question. Caleb Woodward getting there very quickly. Third base coach from ETBU on the field asking the field umpire to have a conversation at least with home plate. They're discussing right now. It's hard to imagine they're going to be able to overturn it. And they uphold the call, the fist is up, and the half inning is over. Robbery from Caleb Woodward, you'll see it again here. I mean, frankly, as good as it gets defensively right there, run saving snag from Caleb Woodward, and probably exactly what this Trinity squad needed defensively, hopefully, it inserts a little bit of juice in the bats on the other side of things. We'll see if it does when we come back for the bottom of the second, nothing, nothing between the two Tigers of Texas. Bottom of the second in San Antonio, still nothing, nothing. As a new pitcher in for ETVU, it's Braden Carnes. 
Comes in with an 0-1 record, an ERA of 27, but he was an All-ASC honorable mention in 2022. So some electric stuff in the arm of Carnes. We'll see if we see it here as he faces Corson Hastings. And takes strike one. Hastings playing first base today, hitting over 300 on the year. Not in the starting lineup very much to start the year, but he's worked his way in more as the season has progressed. As that's grounded to second. And there's one down. And it seemed like he's dealt with a little bit of an injury here in San Antonio. I can tell maybe reflected in the way he gets down the first baseline after that ball batted into play. I think it just shows how dangerous he can be if despite maybe not playing at 100%, Coach Scannell feels that his bat is certainly still deserving of being in this offensive lineup. Now the right fielder, Maddox McDonald. McDonald working with one down and nobody on. That's fouled up to make it one and one. McDonald, the junior in his first year with the Tigers, began his collegiate career at Louisiana Lafayette. And it's incredible how pads can cross sometimes. That's where Jack Martinez is right now, Trinity Tiger pitcher last season as that's fouled up into the screen to make it one and two. Yeah, effectively just a trade that took place and I think both parties have to be satisfied. McDonald, outfielder here in San Antonio who has certainly made his presence felt with his speed. As that's high to make it two and two. See McDonald be a versatile player. Able to bunt, move people over, and do that as he hits it up the middle. As McDonald is aboard with a one-out knock. And very solid contact from Maddox McDonald right there, taking that one and shooting it right back up the middle past Carnes. Doesn't have to quite get out of the way, but still almost a heat seeker right back at the pitcher. Good to see from Maddox McDonald, of course, for the purpose of him being over there at first base and providing some immediate offense, but also not something that we've seen him do all that frequently here in San Antonio this season, barreled baseballs. As McDonald was off and running, that's fouled off by the catcher, Matias Riding. This is the first game that Nick Lazera has not caught all year. As the Tigers working on a back-to-back -back in the middle of the week, Lazera gets the day off and Riding takes his place in the lineup. Now working in an 0-1 count. Outside, and it's one and one. Luke, it's hard to believe that that single up the middle by Maddox McDonald, the first hit by either team in this game, despite all the traffic we've had. Yeah, I, but I think a little believable considering these two offenses, usually offenses as good as these are. Bunt from riding. And the sacrifice is complete as McDonald takes second. Really have to rely on getting on base any way that they can. And while they certainly have quite a few dangerous bats, both of these squads up and down the orders, not every day are they going to go out and have success hitting the baseball. There's going to be some pretty impressive arms in this region. I know each of these squads have some guys at the front end of their weekend rotations that are hard to deal with. For that reason, you have to take base runners anywhere you can get them, and both of these squads have been happy to do so today. Now the nine-hole hitter, Kai Tinker, up to bat. Tinker, a native of Simi Valley, just outside L.A. He works in an 0-1 count. Outside, one and one. So McDonald able to take second base on the sacrifice bunt. This means that of the four half innings we've had, a runner has reached scoring position in all four. Still nobody has brought anyone home. Throw off the backside. That's in time. McDonald picked off to end the inning. A good play from ETBU takes us to the top of the third. Still nothing, nothing in San Antonio.
top of the third inning in San Antonio. Still nothing, nothing as both of these teams have left quite a few runners stranded. Jonathan Newman back on the mound for Trinity as he faces Jacob Evangelista, who takes strike one. Evangelista 0 for 1. He struck out swinging. That was against Carter Aldman, who started this game. So that pitch is outside to make it one apiece. As Luke, the Tigers are just going to try and cobble something together pitching-wise. They threw a lot of arms yesterday, a lot of their guys that would normally go in this midweek situation. Let's, we'll see what kind of product that they put out there today. Yeah, and you rattled off Jonathan Newman's stats earlier in the game as soon as he came on to the mound for Trinity. And, of course, certainly one of the better arms in relief. You just have to wonder how long is he going to be able to go with that weekend series pending in conference play for Trinity. Tigers sandwiching this game and a game yesterday against Concordia. In between conference play, Southwestern last weekend, they'll head up to Shriner this weekend. As that's located for strike three, Evangelista can't believe it, but he heads back to the dugout without number one. Yeah, not too happy about this one, but just a perfectly placed breaking ball right there. And finishes riding a little bit outside in that left-handed batter's box. I think the home plate umpire rewarding Newman for the break on that baseball. Hit up the middle and the first hit of the game for ETBU with one down. It belongs to Durden. This time, Newman not going to get away with what's essentially the same exact pitch. Maybe a little conversation between Evangelista and Durden as he was walking into the box. Now so, Nicholas Chavez into the batter's box. After that pitch, Newman signaling to his young catcher behind the play and move further to the batter's box next time around, especially in the middle of this order. Two dangerous hitters to put anything that close. Chavez 0 for 1 today. He struck out looking the last time he was up as he takes ball 1. You think that would be the one benefit of this being a bullpen game for the Tigers, maybe not leaving guys in long enough to figure them out. Hit in the air. We'll see if it's playable. It is, and the catch is made by Hastings for out number two. Yeah, and off the bat, I felt for sure like this one was going to get out of play, and then all of a sudden kind of just died over there right behind first base. And Hastings was getting over to that fencing in foul territory rather quickly and then kind of had to course correct, started heading backwards. Always dangerous when you're drifting backwards, but ultimately able to haul that one in, and looks like maybe the damage on that base hit not going to come to fruition. Runner goes, throw from riding high. And in time, Riding guns him down, and that ends the inning. So back-to-back -back half innings ended with a runner gunned down at second base as we head to the bottom of the third, still nothing, nothing.
bottom of the third in San Antonio. Kai Tinker set to lead things off in a crazy end to that last half inning. Matias riding a great throw to catch ETBU stealing. As Tinker takes strike one, but Luke, that was a really close play. We didn't think that it was going to be made. Yeah, I got a couple looks at the replay while we were away during the break. It certainly looked like Durden was in there really right at the bag. Not sure if he didn't get hands on it, or what the circumstances happened to be. One way or another, a very strong throw from riding behind the plate against a guy that had quite a jump on the base paths on that delivery. Now you saw it on the replay. There's a little bit of an indent in the green right before second base. Durden was about there when the throw got to Harris. As Harris fouls that back to stay, or as I should say, Tinker fouls that back to stay alive. Harris able to wrangle in the high throw on that stolen base attempt and apply the tag. Hit in the air to center. And the catch is made in the outfield grass for out number one. Yeah, and it's Durden out there at second base who hauls that one in. Again, slightly tough conditions in San Antonio today between the overcast gray skies here and the flags that are now blowing out pretty heartily in center field. That ball just kept drifting again. A couple of pop-ups that we've seen be affected by the wind in the last half inning plus. Peterson takes strike one. You see the numbers on your screen. Hitting 286 on the year, OPS well over 1,000 now. Hit up the middle, a base knock. A one out hit for Peterson. He's thinking about two, but he'll stay at first, content with a single. Yeah, I think I would have about lost my mind if Jack Peterson tried to stretch that one into a double. Pretty routine base hit right back up the middle. Not a gapper or anything of that variety. Certainly a lot of aggression because he has a lot of speed on the base paths, but likely better served to try and run, although it wasn't a great idea in the last time that he played East Texas Baptist, thrown out for only the second time in his career, the first time in what was 30-plus attempts between caught stealings. Well, the last count that I had was at least 32 attempts was thrown out the first time he tried it against Schreiner. 32 consecutive. As that bunt dropped down by Woodward, he's got a chance. And the play, not in time. Woodward safe at first. And back-to-back -back runners reach for the Tigers. Yeah, and Evangelista makes this a very close play over at first, but it's just too good of a bunt by Caleb Woodward. A slow dribbler down the line, too far away from Carnes on the mound, too far away from Chavez behind home plate. Evangelista has to charge in all the way from the bag at third, try and make this throw across his body, and just couldn't get quite enough on it. And now not the situation ETBU wants to face Colt Harrison who did so much damage against them last week. With two runners on, only one out. We saw Harris hit his first home run of the season over the left field wall against UT Dallas, a home run we weren't sure was going to leave the yard, ended up doing so, and that's just carried so much momentum for Harris. As that pitch does not get away, runners stay where they are. And Harris, a true senior here in San Antonio, a member of what has been a pretty important class. And Jack Peterson out there at second base, Christian Holloway, a name we've called a lot. And then it's not to mention the arms that are in the bullpen as well. That does get away, and both runners quickly advance to second and third. And we saw Harris square round, threatened to bunt in this at bat already. Looked like perhaps it got taken off. Ultimately, he won't have to offer again. Huge spot now as the double play ball gets taken off the board with one out. Now sack fly possibility in the picture. 3-0 pitch, so we'll see if the red light's on. It is, and he takes strike one. Yeah, but one way or another, good pitch 
from Carnes right there. It looked like he hit that spot on the outside part of the play. Harris talked about it. Pretty pull happy hitter. Imagine he wants something in that wheelhouse. Hit to left, and it falls. One run comes across, another coming in. Woodward is safe, and it's 2 nothing Tigers, a two RBI single from Colt Harris. I don't know if Caleb Woodward read this really exquisitely well off the bat or if he just put himself in really hot water with Coach Scannell for a moment. But he was practically at third base when this one ultimately got down. He was either scoring or he was getting thrown out at second base. You see him. He's turning and watching over his shoulder but continued to leak out. Very aggressive base running by the first year right there, and it pays off with a second run for Trinity. It's now Alex Monson into the batter's box. You know, I was watching the baseball to see whether it would fall, and then I see home plate and Woodward is right behind Jack Peterson coming in home and you wonder how he got there so fast there's your answer hit to left a similar spot and that's going to fall as well it finds the gap Monson heads for second Harris rounding third he heads home and he is in safely three nothing Trinity an RBI double for Alex Monson and a great piece of hitting from Monson right here. We talked about it on the broadcast all weekend. A guy that left the yard and was a little pull happy in his previous appearances at the plate. This time, satisfied to go the opposite way with the baseball. And it just continued to fade until it found its way into that left center field gap. Ultimately, scratching across the third run for Trinity here in the home half. And that'll be the day for Carnes. He leaves responsible for the runner at second and the three runs on the board. Three nothing Tigers as a pitching change in San Antonio will happen. New pitcher in for ETBU, it's Ben Burrows, and you see the ERA on your screen, very impressive at 1.8, with a 1.2 as he faces Baker, who's 0 for 1 today, and takes strike one. Yeah, good way to get ahead, using that breaking ball that he drops in right on the hands of Baker, who I'm sure is pretty narrowly expecting fastball right there. Takes ball one outside to even the count. This inning still not done. Only one out recorded for ETBU. Still a runner on second. A chance for Trinity to add on. And you would think they're going to need it. ETBU quite prolific offensively. Good pitch. No call. And it's two and one. Yeah, and maybe not the absolute slugfest that you would imagine between these two the last time out but both of these offenses proving that they were certainly capable in that one a little back and forth offensive action these two played in Marshall hit to left Monson gets the red light he stays at third and Baker puts runners at the corners still only one down in the inning and really the last two times up right-handed hitters that is in the batter's box 
ETBU has shown what they anticipate from this Trinity offense over there at first base for the Tiger counterparts. Rumichik, he's playing really far off that bag. I think it's because this Trinity team has been so pole happy. Baker proves that no matter where you shade in the infield, it's really not going to pay off. Really hard hit ball through the left side that time. Tigers finding a way to collect hits in this inning, and Corson Hastings, the first baseman, will try to continue the trend. Hit to left, playable. Monson tags after the catch and scores easily to make it 4 nothing. Sacrifice fly for Corson Hastings, and the Tigers extend the lead. Yeah, and it's Newland out there in left field for ETBU who gets to this ball or this spot in a hurry, but ultimately kind of puts himself right under it. Doesn't run through it. Couldn't quite get exactly what he wanted on this baseball on the throw in. It had to be cut. And then you're right. Before that reason, Monson scores easily from third when otherwise they might have a chance to gun him down at the plate. Baker goes, and he's going to be able to take an extra base because of it. Or no, he won't. Either way, Milligan puts that into left, and there's two Tigers aboard. Yeah, I'm not sure that this one is not going to get down one way or another. Milligan not getting a great piece of this baseball a little bit off the end of the bat. Actually now seeing the replay, I imagine that it probably doesn't get down if the hit and run isn't on right there. Burnham in moving over from shortstop, and it looks like that one certainly would have been right in his vicinity had he not been trying to apply a tag at second base that ultimately never came. It's now the catcher, Matias writing up. Should be noted, Milligan a pinch hitter in this game. It was Maddox McDonald that started it. He had a base hit up the middle. That was the first hit of this game. Milligan getting a hit in his own right. He's at first, Baker waiting at second. Still an opportunity for writing with two outs and two on. Check swing. And they're appealing, but no call, so it looks like it's two and one. Yeah, and Chavez was busy trying to block this baseball. I think he assumed, you see him go down, that it would have naturally been a call the home plate umpire made. By the time he asked for the check, the home plate umpire refused to do so, which is just a little bit odd to see. So it brings it to, that pitch is low. And now it's two and one. Or now it's three and one, it was right before. Count changing on our screen. Pitch gets away, that's ball four, we can confirm that, base is loaded. And I think ETBU maybe getting the short end of the stick right there. Check swing where it certainly looked like Matias Riding might have broken the plane, but ultimately on the mound, Burroughs couldn't come back and overcome the adversity. Now Trinity with the bases loaded, look to continue this big bottom of the third. As that pitch misses, Tinker led off this inning. As he flew out to his counterpart at third base. But from there, the Tigers able to put four runs on the board. They have them loaded in a position to do more damage. Hit in the air to shallow center. And the catch is made to end the inning. End of three, four nothing. The Tigers add on and take the lead, though they leave the bases loaded.
Top of the fourth, Jonathan Newman still out there for the Tigers as he faces Wagner, who walked the last time he was up for ETBU. But you saw the ad on your screen in the break in the inning. A total eclipse coming to San Antonio. San Antonio, at least part of it, is in the path of totality. So unique opportunity for students here at Trinity University to see something that you don't see very often. That pitch misses to make it one and one. Yeah, it should be an interesting day here. I know there's a lot planned at the university and certainly want to highlight that as much as possible. Swing and a miss and it's one and two. Should be noted the campus of Trinity not completely in the path of totality, so there is a, basically a plan. You get transportation, there's a meal provided where you get to go to a ranch that is in the path of totality, where it should get essentially completely dark as that pitch misses to make it two and two. Grounded to Baker, it's gonna be a tough play. Throw, gets away, but the runner stays at first and it's a base hit for the leadoff man. Yeah, you're right. Tough play might be a bit of an understatement on this one. So hard hit that Tinker can't cut it off from his spot at third base. He's having a conversation with the dugout right now as to whether or not he should be diving for that one. Because otherwise, Baker did exactly what he needs to, works around it so that he can work through it and get a little bit of extra momentum behind his throw over to first. But even then, nothing that he could do with an outfielder and Wagner running on that one. So Brett Wagner at first, and now Hunter Rumacek in trying to bring him over. Nobody out, runner on first. As it's an 0-1 pitch, they'll check on Wagner, who gets back safely. Trinity opening up a 4-0 lead in the bottom of the third. Jonathan Newman and the rest of this pen trying to hang on to it. And while this Trinity bullpen shown at times that it can be completely capable of hanging on to a lead like this, you'd think just with the opponent that they're playing, it could be a tough challenge just with four runs. Swing and a miss, it's strike two. Yeah, you have to imagine that one way or another, Trinity is going to need some more run support. ETBU, a team that's almost certainly not going to be held scoreless here in San Antonio, especially in a midweek game where there's going to be more arms coming out of the bullpen. Jonathan Newman certainly has established himself positively in this game, but again, I have to question how long is the leash going to be for one of your best relievers? 1-2 pitch. In the dirt, Riding keeps it in front of him, and it's 2-2. Two and two. They'll check on him again. Understandably, Wagner has stolen seven bases this season. He has been caught once. But still, an ETBU team that likes to steal as a whole. And there's strike three. Another strikeout for Jonathan Newman. And there's one down in the inning. So Newman able to record the strikeout on Rumacek, and it brings up Newland, the left fielder. Newland walked the last time he was up. Runner goes, swing and a miss, strike one, throw. In time. Riding two for two, he guns them both down. And there's two down in the inning, another play we weren't sure was gonna be made. It's been a couple of times that the runners from ETBU have had very impressive jumps, but this one I'm even less sure about. It's Colt Harris out there at second base who receives the ball right there and puts the tag down. But it looked like Wagner, who had just shown off his speed on the base paths, maybe was starting to bend the legs a little bit as his front feet had hit the bag. Trying to slow himself down there, but not sure that the field umpire has gotten either of these calls right, to be honest with you. 
Yeah, you're right. That one, it looked like he was almost starting to stand up after his slide hitting the bag, but the call made out. Obviously no replay review in Division Three baseball. As that pitch just outside to make it three and two. Newland trying to replenish the base runner that ETVU just lost. And he does with ball four. But certainly the ETBU coaching staff has not been all that much pleased or satisfied with these umpires. The start of this inning, not sure about names, but third base coach heading down, made his way behind home plate, had some words for the home plate umpire who gave him a warning. And then I heard pretty clearly, I'll take a warning, but you have to start getting it right. Well, this one not going to be called out. as the runner reaches second on the wild pitch. ETBU trying to claw into this deficit. They're getting out hit seven to two, outscored four to nothing. But they've had opportunities throughout this game, left the bases loaded in the top of the first. So that's grounded foul to make it one and one. Cameron French, the hitter in for ETBU, the designated hitter today. Grounded out to Kai Tinker his first time up. He's 0 for 1. Newland to the runner at second. In the dirt, 2 and 1. Newman trying to get out of the inning. Only needs one out, and he'll try and get it off the backside unsuccessfully. Luke, that looked like a good play by Baker just to keep that throw in front of him. Yeah, more or less had to stop on a dime out there as he was making his way back to the bag at second. Newman put it right on his body. Hit in the air to left and in the Tiger bullpen, no play for Woodward. Yeah, with the flags flying from right to left field here in San Antonio, that one just kept drifting off the bat. Looked like it might stay in fair territory, but not a whole lot of space down that left field line, especially closer to the corner, that bullpen fencing really just five or six feet off the foul line. We've seen this in this ballpark, the wind continuing the shift in different directions, now blowing from right to left. It was blowing dead center just a few innings ago. That's kind of the luck of the draw when you're a batter in this ballpark. Can you get the wind to go in the right direction to help guide the ball? That pitch misses to make it three and two. Newman trying to get out of this inning. It was Newland that walked with two outs. Now he waits at second. Fouled off and will do it again. Nothing else, ETBU continuing to work Newman's pitch count. A reliever coming out of the pen in each of his appearances. You wonder how much longer he's gonna be able to go after this. And you imagine that Newman's probably not gonna go on Friday. It's been pretty steady. Just the duo of Shivana and Will Hellings They've had two consecutive games where they're the only two arms that they've needed in tandem. Swing and a miss, that's strike three. Newman gets out of it. Still 4-0 Tigers as they put up another zero.
bottom of the fourth in South Texas. New arm in for ETBU, it's Preston Crow, who made his last appearance a week ago against these Trinity Tigers. Pitched one inning, two strikeouts, allowed an earned run, but ultimately collected the win in the 7-5 victory in Marshall. So he'll go against Jack Peterson, the leadoff man, to lead off this inning. And it's 0-1. Crow comes in with a 2-0 record, making his sixth appearance of the season. He has a 4.35 ERA. And trying to stop this Tiger momentum. They scored four runs in their last half inning that they were batting. Held ETBU scoreless. So that pitches away to make it 1-1. One one. ETBU trying to get things going back their way, but they've shown their ability to come back in, these, in games like this, particularly against Trinity just a week ago. And we already talked about it once. That was certainly the back-and-forth affair that you would anticipate between two very highly-ranked squads. ETBU had all the answers in that one. Still looking for some here today. They've tried to find it on the base pads, moving people over into scoring position. Of course, a couple of caught stealings. Some very close calls that haven't gotten their way. Some calls that we were uncertain about but have actually received pretty damning confirmation that out on the base paths was Brett Wagner in the last half inning it was starting to stand up like we talked about and hypothesized but it was not because his foot was on the bag he was just popping up before he got there somehow as Peterson walks and he's aboard with nobody down it'll bring up Caleb Woodward but yeah, when I saw the photo I was baffled because watching it live and I'm sure many of the viewers felt the same way that there is no way that that throw was in time, but it was. The foot not quite there as Woodward hits that through the gap. Peterson rounding second. He's going to head to third as Caleb Woodward puts runners at the corners. And not wasting any time right here are the Trinity Tigers trying to keep things going offensively, and they do a wonderful job. Baker, one way or another, who has so much speed on the base paths, gets a jump on this first delivery from Crow, Woodward jumps all over it, anticipating a fastball, something that's gonna start him off in the zone. Does a nice job pulling that through the right side. Woodward goes and takes it. A stolen base for Caleb Woodward as there's no throw and two in scoring position with nobody out. That base hit means back-to-back -back singles for Caleb Woodward and he's showing what a threat he can be on the base paths. I'm not entirely sure that Chavez had the right call in there in the first and third situation. He immediately looked down to Peterson with Woodward on the move and then recognizing uh, Woodward was standing on second, kind of looked back to his dugout, shaking his head, kind of tapped his chest, shook his head. Not sure if they had a play on accounting for the runner going from first to second. Fouled back in the screen keep it at one and two, or to make it one and two, I should say. But Colt Harris up. He's walked and singled, one for one on the day, working with runners at second and third. It's already done so much damage against ETBU, trying to do it again. Fouled back, and that would have been right at us if it hadn't been for the screen. Yeah, and ETBU trying to do everything they can to avoid that damage. The entire infield in here in San Antonio. Hit to right, it falls, and that ball's going towards the corner. One runs in as Peterson scores. Woodward's in. Harris slides in safely at second base, and he collects his third RBI of the day. It's a double for Colt Harris. And not a particularly hard hit ball, but exactly what you need in this scenario. Put it in the air just over this infield that's playing in on the cutout of the grass. Quote unquote grass, I should say, given the turf here in San Antonio. But it dies well ahead of the outfielders. And you're right, that one continuing to roll towards the corner. It was a nice job by Wagner out there and right. He got to it quickly, got it back in on the infield. 
But Harris just narrowly in there ahead of the throw at second base. As Alex Monson takes strike one, Harris at second base, still nobody out. The first three batters for Trinity all reaching, two of them scoring to make it 6 nothing. They've out hit ETBU 9-2. to two. You think about this team coming off the frustrating performance yesterday, the 8-7 loss to Concordia. Maybe taking some of those frustrations out. Yeah, I would, I would certainly agree with you there, Cole, but also raises some questions. Back and forth, a little bit of an up and down year. Think back to the Wisconsin Whitewater series where you lose two games, give up a combined 35 runs, and then come back and beat the Pass top the ranking. dive, Monson into first, Harris coming around to score, throw not in time, and it's seven, nothing Trinity. It's like almost the exact same thing here in San Antonio today. You lose yesterday on the road against a Concordia team that clearly has some real talent. They're going to take down a Trinity team that's now out ahead of East Texas Baptist by a score of 7 nothing. As a meeting between catcher and pitcher now, as this is unraveled quite a bit for... ETBU now 7 nothing a three run inning put up by the Tigers followed following a four run inning yeah, and still with zeros on the board here you can't blame Chavez for taking the trip out to the mound and Crow in a spot where he certainly needs to be settled down we've talked so much about this Trinity pitching staff and Jonathan Newman who's likely going to see some innings this weekend so they journey up to Kerrville to play Shriner. But East Texas Baptist as well, right in the middle of their conference campaign, can't afford to use too many of these arms in this midweek non-conference game. Crow came in, certainly has to make the most of it, but he's yet to record an out here. Monson, the runner at first, still nobody out in a 7 nothing game as Jack Baker's in. Now 1-1 count. You talk about the scale to which this game might matter. ETBU 6-0 in conference, obviously wanting to save your arms to have a good position in the conference tournament. Same with Trinity as Baker takes strike two. But this game might matter if both of these teams get through their conference tournaments as to where you're going to go for a potential regional, you would think, especially with the Tigers upgrading their facilities. Trinity now in a position where maybe they can host a regional and ETBU might have to come here. Hard hit out to center, and the catch is made for out number one as Baker is retired. And you mentioned it just a little while ago, Cole. One of the most difficult jobs for hitters, something that's truly out of their control, is trying to get into the batter's box when the wind is playing in their favor. Previously, the wind was blowing out rather hard, and while the flags are still moving, a bit in that direction. It certainly died down in here in San Antonio just as soon as Jack Baker sent something out that direction. That's inside the course in Hastings. Hastings one for two today. Or I should say 0 for one, a sacrifice fly the last time he was up. That's strike one to make it one and one. These two teams meeting in the regional last season came down to a final championship game, which ETBU took two to one, and that they took that momentum all the way to the College World Series. These two of the premier programs in Division Three baseball. And it goes back to what we were saying earlier about maybe the slight importance of this one. ETBU already taking one game from Trinity. Tigers trying to split the series. It puts an interesting decision for the committee for where these teams will go. Grounded to first, could be two. Throw to second for one, no play at first, but they do get the lead runner, and there's two down in the inning. Yeah, and more than anything on this play, it's a very, very nice job by Burnaman over there at shortstop. He moves over and has to more or less take this one right off the ground. It was the right idea by Rumichik. Recognized they probably had a very good chance to get two with 
Corson Hastings running down that first base line. But just a better decision by Burnman right there, taking that out at second, getting the lead runner, and making sure that they got at least that. It's Max Milligan takes strike one. Crow battling back in this inning. Allowed the first three or four Trinity batters to reach. Counting for three runs in this inning to make it seven nothing Tigers. So Milligan grounds that to first and takes it to the bag himself to end the inning. End of four in San Antonio, it's seven nothing Tigers as they've opened this thing to a large lead. Jonathan Newman back out there for the top of the fifth inning, working with a 7-0 lead as he faces Dylan Burneman. 0 for 1 today, still a 300 hitter on the season. And ZTBU in a 7-0 hole. Burneman swings and misses for strike one. Newman continuing to work. Hit hard and into the Tiger bullpen for strike two. Newman entered this game with two outs in the first inning has continued to work all the way to the fifth. High one and two. And you see the ERA on your screen. It's dropped to .66. That is rivaling Jackson Tears .42. Check swing two and two. And I mean, this version of Jonathan Newman has been quite fantastic here in San Antonio. And one of the big things is he gets ahead as he has done in this count, and he doesn't waste pitches like we see some mistakes that get made sometimes. Hit in the air and foul. You could argue that that breaking ball offering just a pitch ago was maybe not the most competitive, but. And still, considering the fact that it was of the breaking ball variety, it wasn't spiked so far out in front of home plate, and the fastball before that was right across the numbers. Hit in the air. This could be trouble, but it won't be as Milligan comes in to make the catch. Out number one. Yeah, pretty softly hit again right there, this time from East Texas Baptist concerned that it's just going to drop in over the heads of these outfielders as Colt Harris was tracking back rather aggressively, but ultimately Milligan had plenty of time as that one hung up. Now the leadoff man, Connor Massiminian for ETBU. He's 0 for 1. He lined out to left. An incredible catch made by Caleb Woodward to take away a base hit. Yeah, took away a base hit and also saved a run. Man on third base would have scored very easily. And he gets his base hit. So he lines that to center and is in with a base knock. Yeah, just the third hit of the day for East Texas Baptist. But now, I believe the third time through for this order as a whole. For some, still just their second time facing off against 
Jonathan Newman on the mound, but you have to imagine that they're settling into this game and eventually hitters as qualified and capable as these Tigers are, you're going to see that happen more and more frequently. As Evangelista takes strike one. 0 for 2 with two strikeouts as they check on Massimini. Massimini, the hero a week ago. Game was tied at 5 in the bottom of the 8th when Connor Massimini leaves the yard to make it 7-5, and ETBU would hang on and win. Ball in the dirt. Good job by writing to make sure that that wasn't trouble. Wouldn't be so shocked to see Massimini on the move here in San Antonio. The aggression certainly has slowed because of the rulings on the base paths. Hit to left, the catch is made by Woodward, and there's two down. But as this has continued, imagine that there's going to have to be some sort of a spark, another very hard hit ball off the bat of Evangelista right there. Unfortunately for him, it was just right at Woodward in left field. Usually when the ball travels that far, it's not so much on a rope, but that one very much was. He'll check on Massimini at first. He's back safely. Landon Duran, the second baseman in the batter's box. He's reached both times, one of one. A base hit and a hit by pitch the first time he was up. Now works with two down and a runner on. Tigers and the Tigers seeing each other for the second time in the span of a week as they'll check on Massimini again as it's beginning to sprinkle here in San Antonio. I don't know if this is a sprinkle or a mist. What do you think? I would define this as more of a mist, but considering the fact that I am personally in shorts and a T-shirt, there is there are no good conditions for me at the moment. The designation <laughs> doesn't matter all that much. <laughs> this is the one pitch coming up from Newman. He's very worried about Massimini. Yeah, he didn't follow the Boy Scout motto there. I did not come prepared for this one. No. I didn't know it was going to rain. I thought it was going to be, you know, like, I think low 60s. So I brought the sweatshirt, so I'm... I'm okay. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Grounded to Baker. And he goes the short way to end the inning. As we head to the bottom of the fifth, it's still 7-0 Trinity as they lead ETBU.
And welcome back to the bottom of the fifth in San Antonio. The mist continuing here in South Texas as the catcher Matias Riding set to lead things off for the Tigers. That pitch outside for ball one. A new arm in for ETBU. It's Matthew Irwin making his fifth appearance of the season. Comes in with a 1-0 record and a 6.23 ERA as Matias hits that one up the middle. Matias riding aboard with a base hit, and it's a leadoff knock for the Tigers. And what a performance from this offense today. And seemingly have had everything working for them, sending that one right back up the middle. Another leadoff runner aboard for Trinity as they look to continue the scoring trend that's been present in the last two half innings. Brings up the nine-hole hitter, Kai Tinker. Tinker 0 for 2. He's flown out both times. And Chavez does a good job to keep that pitch in front of him. And Luke, the condition's not getting any better for you right now. It is more misting. I don't know if it's sprinkling yet, but there's more mist. Yeah, there is certainly more mist. I feel like overall it's been a damper on this game. Runner goes, throw high, not in time, and a stolen base for the catcher making his first career start. Yeah, not something that you're going to say very frequently at any baseball game at any level. Catcher, stolen base, first career start, sitting him very quickly there despite the wet conditions, getting down at second pretty easily. I think it's sprinkling now. I would classify this as sprinkling as that drops in for strike one. Tinker still ahead two and one. Yeah, this is going to be storybook, though. This is the this is the game we're never going to forget. It seems that way. It seems that way. It's actually the count one and two as they make the correction on the scoreboard. Swing and a miss, strike three. Or maybe they had it right the first time. Nope. Tinker double-checked. He wasn't sure either. But he does head back to the dugout as that's out number one. And Irwin doing a nice job, taking advantage of the opportunity to get an out against the nine-hole hitter right there. It's exactly what he does. Gets ahead in the count and then goes up and in on the hands of Kai Tinker, who just can't quite catch up to that fastball. It's now the leadoff man, Jack Peterson, up. And that pitch way high and to the backstop. Riding takes third. And Luke, what I predicted would happen in the break seems to be transpiring. My papers are not blowing away anymore. They are now sticking to the table because they're wet. Yeah, previously wind was the concern here in San Antonio, but with the way that ball just slipped out of Irwin's hands, the wet conditions have to wonder how easy it's going to be to play through. There's no rain in the forecast today, but again, overcast, very humid here in San Antonio, and now a little bit of precipitation in the air, and whatever form you want to call it. I don't think it matters too much to the guys on the field. Peterson ahead, 2-0. and We're now working with a runner on third. Takes the ball in the dirt to make it 3-0. and As these weather conditions just slightly escalate minute by minute. Looking to downtown, it doesn't look like it's going to get much better. Inside ball four, and Peterson draws a walk. And didn't look like it was too bad of a miss from Irwin right there. In and a little bit down to Peterson, but Peterson was pretty convinced of the spot. Started taking off that protective gear right away and inning going to continue for Irwin. So to bring up Caleb Woodward, he's two for two. Back-to-back -back base hits has also drawn a walk today. Squares up to bunt, pulls it back for ball one. Of course, one of those base hits was of the bunt variety. Laid one down perfectly down that third base line. Evangelista was charging, just couldn't quite get enough on the throw to gun Woodward down at first base. Bunt dropped down the first base line. That's going to score a run, and Woodward reaches safely. 
three consecutive base hits for Caleb Woodward, two by way of the bunt. And there's two aboard in an 8-0 ball game. And again, it's just a perfectly executed one. Irwin throwing, and as a righty, he's going to fall towards this first base line. It's exactly what happens, and Woodward does exactly what he needs to. You get a little bit more behind this bunt to get it past him. Irwin couldn't get down quick enough to field that one, and once it got by him, really there was no shot for any of the ETBU Tigers in the field to get Woodward at first base. Just a wonderful, wonderful job in this at bat in that last time out executing these bunts. As the meeting adjourned for ETBU, they talk about facing Colt Harris. Tigers out hitting ETBU 12 to three right now. The score is eight to nothing. All the damage done in three consecutive innings counting this one. Harris takes the ball in the dirt and the runners will have no problem taking second and third. Peterson was thinking about taking it further but stays at third base. And again, I probably would have lost my mind had Jack Peterson tried to score from second base on a pass ball right there. But he very wisely holds up at third. Coach Dave Smith pops out of the dugout for just a second with a towel wet conditions they've slowed here just for a moment in san antonio not as drastic swing and a miss from harris and it's one and one but right it has slowed down a little bit thankfully my papers i think add about enough you're kind of at the perfect spot now you can still read everything and you haven't you know washed away any ink anything of that variety but now they're staying still harris hits that to center peterson tags Throw to third, not in time. And they say in time. So Woodward thrown out at third base, and that will end the inning. An odd double play executed by ETBU as we head to the top of the sixth. Still 8 nothing. Trinity. Scoring update from the last half inning. Jack Peterson tagged and came home. That run did count despite the double play. So it is nine to nothing Trinity as we head to the top of the sixth inning. Jonathan Newman still out there being a workhorse for the Tigers today. But I mean, have to go back and highlight that throw from center field, Massimini just gunning down Woodward at third. It was a nice job, Evangelista fielding that one. Kind of one of those subtle act like the ball is not coming and fool that runner over there. Woodward was getting down, but it was just an even stronger throw from Massimini in center field to get ETBU out of a little bit of jam there as the runner would have been over at third. As this is a pinch hitter for ETBU, it's Austin Berry, but you're going to see how the last inning ended. Just absolutely unloads, and then Evangelista pretty nonchalant over there at the bag. Barry grounds that foul to make it one and two. So not the best day, obviously, for ETBU. Down 9 nothing. not a result. I don't think anybody expected just with the margin of the deficit. But still, everything they want is ahead of them. 6-0 and in conference play, and it's a very competitive conference as that's popped up. Tinker diving can't make the play, and Barry is aboard with a base hit. Yeah, and off the bat, it looked like this one was going to be trouble. 
not a whole lot of time to dissect and try and figure out the best approach. Tinker does everything he can. Barry was probably halfway, if not two-thirds down the line right there. Wonder maybe if they let it bounce and try and take it off a hop, is it going to be an easier play? But don't blame them. All-out effort right there comes up just a little bit short and still very comfortable margins here to work with. That pitches away, but we talk about the level of competition in the American Southwest Conference. That's where ETBU is. They won the conference for the first time last season. Something I got to talk to their coach, Jared Hood, about. Said it was a very proud coaching moment as he's taken this program to places it just hasn't been before, able to make the College World Series last season. And you think about the way they did it in the ASC tournament. They lost their first game to Hardin-Simmons. They were in the loser's bracket. They could have gone home very early. They stuck with it. They took it one game at a time, and he said his guys accepted and embraced the challenge. And they ultimately ended up beating Hardin-Simmons in the championship game at the end. And they rode that all the way past Trinity to the World Series. So that pitch hit hard but foul off one of the posts in the nets in left field. Yeah, the swimming pool out in left field previously got a lot of baseball visitors in years past. So it looks like we're ultimately going to get a pitching change. That one was a hearty hack. There's been some changes we alluded to on the field here in San Antonio, including some higher poles and netting out in that corner. But that one previously would have been destined for a splashdown. As that will be the day for Jonathan Newman, he leaves this game. And what a day it was for him. Entered this game in the first inning, continued to pitch all the way into the sixth. And leaves with a 9 nothing lead, but we'll stick around on Tiger Network. Continue to talk about ETBU and how they won the conference last year. It was just really an incredible story, winning it for the first time in their program history. Such a proud moment for the program as they come and try and carry that momentum into this year. Yeah, and you allude specifically to that conference tournament. And for those that follow exclusively Trinity University, of course playing in the SCAC, that postseason tournament, a four-team format. The ASC, not the same scenario. I believe it's at least six, if not more, teams that make that postseason tournament. They didn't come back and just win three baseball games. They had a lot of work to do, and I'm sure they were worn rather thin, but you're right. They came all the way back. I think I looked at their schedule from last year, not so recently, but within the past several weeks. I think in that conference tournament, they ultimately had to win four, if not five baseball games on top of that loss. So they had a lot of baseball to play, and this team rallied together and somehow you know, stringing together performances out of the bullpen, finding a way to get the job done. That's exactly what they did. Now a new pitcher in for the Tigers. It's Luke Pfeiffer. Seeing him mostly in a starting capacity this season. Comes in to finish out this game, you would presume. He faces Brent Wagner. Now something really important to mention about Brent Wagner, his RBI total. We talked about it a little bit earlier. He's up to 27. But he is the 14th most RBIs in the country. As Pfeiffer fires strike two, now a 2-2 count to Wagner. He works with a runner on first base. Close pitch, no call. Brings it to a full count. Yeah, it looked like a breaking ball and a spot that we have seen called a strike today on similar pitches. Runner goes, hit in the air to shallow center. Peterson charging in, so is Milligan, and he ends up making the catch. Yeah, and that one rather dangerous, because it looked like Colt Harris was probably the closest defender to it off the bat, but he was charging over to second base given the fact that the runner was moving well out of position. Milligan had a lot of ground to make up, playing rather deep in right field at the moment. But ultimately, he got there. First pitch, 
It's Rumacek in for strike one. And ball one as that pitch misses. Still working with the runner on first. One down in the inning. Now outside two and one. Luke Pfeiffer from Valencia, California, just outside Los Angeles. And his Dodgers opened up the MLB regular season at 5.30 in the morning Central Time. Game against the San Diego Padres in Seoul, South Korea. And I would have been a lot happier to bring this up if the game had gone differently. Dodgers defeating the Padres 5-2. to two. That pitch is fouled off, keeps it at 2-2. Two and two. But it's good to know that in some capacity, baseball is back. Yeah, and of course, we talked about it on a break during this broadcast. It was a competitive game, and I think you can take something from that at the very least. It's fouled off. Yeah, weird occurrence for the Padres that ultimately led to them losing the game in the way they did. A ball breaking through the glove. The webbing of the glove of Jake Cronenworth, the first baseman for San Diego, on a potential double play. I have never seen anything like that, as it looks like that's a hit by pitch. The Rumacek will take first, two aboard with one down for ETBU. And Rumacek doing a nice job in that at bat of just working pitches off. Foul several back, made Pfeiffer work a little bit longer, and ultimately had that breaking ball get away from him. Righty, throwing right into the legs of Rumacek. Unfortunate break for him. Out of the pin, now facing a little bit more traffic. Grounded foul, and it's 0-1. We've seen a lot of base traffic from ETBU, and part of that is just because of how much they walk. They have the sixth most walks in the country. That pitch taken for ball one. Part of that number just because of how patient they are. Coach Hood talked about how much they've developed as hitters from last year to this year. Saying that that number is just part of their maturation. Though he doesn't always agree with it. He told me that he's more of a swing it guy. So his team not quite falling into his identity, but hey, whatever works, right? I feel like it's a lot more fun when you swing it. It seems that way. <laughs> That's fouled back to make it two and two. That's usually the approach that I have on the broadcast when I'm watching teams play. I think it certainly depends on the outcome of at-bats. It's a Trinity team that... Seemed a little strikeout happy in the early portion of the year and took a few too many strikeouts looking. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. First strikeout of Luke Pfeiffer's outing, and there's two away. And a very good response in this at-bat from Luke Pfeiffer, going right at Newland right there, and ultimately wasn't phased by the breaking ball that got away from him just a little bit in the last at-bat to put Rumichik on, came right back with it, and ultimately it was the pitch out, or put out pitch he needed. So still those two runners on for ETBU, and two down in the inning. That's fouled into the catcher's glove for strike one by Carson Wilson, another pinch hitter. Senior from Sugarland, Texas. Ball in the dirt. Riding takes care of it. And it's one and one. Fouled into the screen, and it's one and two. Again, nice job here from Pfeiffer getting ahead in this at bat. Now one, two count opportunity to go back to that breaking ball that's operated relatively well for him today. Outside, 
And that evens the count at two apiece. We talk about the patience of these ETBU hitters. You're seeing it in this at bat right now. But the batting average is down from last season. They hit about 320 last year, which was top 20 in the country. Now down to 299 as that's strike three. Luke Pfeiffer gets back-to-back -back strikeouts to end the inning. Still 9-0 Tigers as we head to the bottom of the sixth. A new arm in for ETBU, it's Braden Hodges making his third appearance of the season. He's pitched 1.1 innings and has yet to allow an earned run. As he faces Alex Monson who takes strike one. Monson two for three today, hitting 370 on the air as he's found a spot at designated hitter, particularly when there's a left-handed batter to start the game. or left-handed pitcher, I should say. That's fouled back to make it one and two. Yeah, it reminds me a couple of years ago, the offensive switching back and forth between Christian Holloway and Nathan Brolick in that DH spot. Hit into left, it gets down, and Monson's good day continues. I remember the early portion of that season, Nathan Brolick going on a little bit of a stretch similar to what we're seeing Alex Monson do right now. He is just seeing the baseball really like nobody else on this Trinity roster. Barrels consistently in this game today, very impressive. The offense again looks to get going here in the bottom of the sixth. So now Jack Baker up to bat, works with a runner on first, nobody out. You know, it's also similar to what we saw Hunter Nevels do at a stretch in the middle of last season. Just about a two-week period where it didn't look like he could get out. I think that's one of the things I've been missing from this squad this year. There hasn't been a guy that's just gone up to the plate and been so unbeatable as a hitter. Strike called. You know, there, I think there are two ways you can look at that. There hasn't been that one guy, but at the same time, there's been one guy on each day, it feels like, that just has their moment. And it's translated into some success. The Tigers ranked 14 in the country coming into this week, falling two spots from where they were last week. ETBU still at number five. As Baker fouls that off to stay alive but the depth of this Tiger lineup. I think you saw it in the Winter World Series when they played each other. It was an inter-squad game, and it was a projected starting lineup against some guys that were going to fill in as utility players, potentially. And the games were really close. The starting players ended up taking the series 2-1, to one, but each game pretty much came down to the wire, and I think that's what we're seeing a lot of this season. Yeah, and it's this approach that generates a lot of pros and cons, it feels like. Baker grounds that to first base. And there's one down in the inning as Monson takes second. 
clearly you have so many guys that you want to get as many as possible into the lineup. But understandable, that can certainly have an impact on a guy's ability to really get into a groove at the plate. And maybe it's limited some particular bats in this Trinity offense, but Alex Monson, not one of them at the moment, swinging it very, very well here today. And he's now down at second base. Now, of course, and Hastings up to bat fouls that off. But that was something I got to talk to Coach Dave Smith, the pitching coach, about. The schedule, just the nature of it, having so many midweek games. We have a Tuesday, we had a Tuesday game yesterday against Concordia, and then you have the Tigers playing today against ETBU, obviously, combined with the weekend series. I said, while it's going to stretch the pitching staff, it's also going to help these hitters get into a groove. You can imagine taking five days off, or four days off, I should say, in between weekend series. It's hard to keep a rhythm going. And he made the example of the Braves and the Dodgers both losing last year while having a bye in the MLB postseason. It's just hard for hitters to get into a rhythm. It's much easier to keep it going when you're playing every day. Hastings works on a 1 1 count. It's high 2 and 1. And Luke, I think you're seeing the impact that the schedule might have offensively. Two years ago, Trinity had nearly 10 runs a game. Not quite there this season, but getting much closer than the 6.3 they were last year. Yeah, it's been pretty steady. And you have to wonder as well now that this team has. And got into this particular portion of their year. Hit in the air to left, or to right, I should say, and the catch is made for out number two. Monson tags and slides into third safely. Now one weekend of conference play in the books and the rest of that schedule remaining. Will we start to see some names that do get cemented in this batting order? Of course, would anticipate in midweek games that don't carry quite as much weight for these faces to continue to rotate. But we'll see this upcoming weekend against Shriner. How do things change? And how similar or dissimilar are they from last weekend's lineup against Southwestern? As Milligan back in to hit for the third time today, he's 0 for 2. Or he's actually 1 for 2. Check swing. Went around for strike two. Milligan actually does have a base hit in this game. He's one for two. Works with two down and the runner on third. Grounded to short. And in time to end the inning. So no damage done in this inning. A zero put up by ETBU. It's still 9-0 Trinity as we head to the top of the seventh. Welcome back to the top of the seventh in San Antonio. Luke Pfeiffer back on the mound for the Tigers, working with a 9-0 lead. 
So that's grounded foul down the first base line. Still in Burnaman. A nine hole hitter up. Burnaman 0 for 2. He's flown out once and grounded out as well. Hit into left, and Burnerman's aboard with a base hit. So a leadoff man aboard for ETBU. Pfeiffer trying to work a scoreless inning, already up 9-0. Trying to keep the momentum going. But Burnerman, a very dangerous batter once he gets aboard. Second in the nation in stolen bases. He has attempted 21, and he's successfully stolen 20 bases as swing and a miss strike one for Pfeiffer. So we'll see how often Pfeiffer checks on him. Hit deep to center field, Peterson back. He makes the catch, and there's one down with one aboard. That was Massimini making good contact with that pitch, just couldn't drive it out of the yard. Part of that maybe being the wind, keeping it in play. As Peterson had the drift back, but was able to do so in plenty of time. As now Pfeiffer, as now Pfeiffer faces the number two hitter. Evangelista working with runner on first and only one down in the inning. In the dirt, good job by riding to keep it in front of him. Burnerman not going yet, has not even tried so far in these two at bats since his. We'll see how patient he is trying to pick his moment. Ball called, and it makes it two and one. Fouled off, now two and two. Trinity trying to avoid losing three consecutive games if they can hang on to this nine nothing lead. They've lost their last two. They dropped the final game against Southwestern 9-2. As that's hit potentially into the gap in right, and it falls. Peterson cuts it off, throws it in, and that holds the runner at third. But a good start to the inning for ETBU. They put him on second and third with only one down. You see on the replay, it looks like just a breaking ball that missed into the zone. Good job by Peterson getting the throw in and holding the runner. So that'll be Landon Duran, the graduate student. Duran one for two today, hitting just under 300, counting what he's done so far. Swing and a miss, strike one. A good pitch from Pfeiffer. Check swing high, and it's one and one. Still two aboard, only one down. Pfeiffer trying to find a way to put a seventh zero on the scoreboard for ETBU. Hit hard to right, and it's a fair ball. One run comes across. Here comes another. The throw to second late, and it's a two RBI double to put the first two runs on the board for ETBU. And we saw a similar ball in play earlier in this game. Put down into that right field corner. Very narrowly was a foul ball. This one very narrowly staying fair. And ultimately, Pfeiffer paying the price for it as two runs come across and ETBU finally breaks the seal. Landon Duran, a two RBI double. As now Pfeiffer works against Austin Berry graduate student from Houston, Texas. 
Barry, usually a starter, was not the case. Today, at least. As that's hit into the air. Maybe a tough spot. Harris calls for it and makes the catch for out number two. Yeah, impressive play from Colt Harris right here. It looked like Max Milligan out in right field had a beat on it and coming in certainly had the easier play. You see Corson Hastings get out of the way. Ultimately, Harris contorting his body and starting to fall backward, squaring his shoulders in case he has to make a throw over to third. But the runner choosing to stay put. Now Pfeiffer just one out away from getting out of the inning. But it's a tough out. It's Brent Wagner who waves at that for strike one. We mentioned how Wagner is an RBI machine in a position with a runner on second to add to his total. Ball in the dirt, one and one. And it's interesting that Pfeiffer working out of the pen in this one. Usually a Saturday starter for the Tigers was so last weekend against Southwestern in a game the Tigers won. See what that means for their future plans as conference play continues. As they say, Wagner checked his swing, making it three and one. Yeah, a little surprised not even seeing an appeal down on that one. Swing and a miss, strike two. The count is full. Ultimately, might not matter. Two's on the board here in San Antonio, and just one more strike needed. Fouled off as Wagner stays alive. Still a 2-2 count. There's strike three. Pfeiffer gets him looking, and that ends the inning. But ETBU puts their first two runs on the scoreboard. It's 9-2. The Trinity Tigers lead the ETBU Tigers. Braden Hodges still in the game for ETBU as he faces Matias Riding as we begin the bottom of the second, or the seventh, I should say. Pitch outside, ball one. That's the only baseball game here in this region on the day. And a highly anticipated one, the number five Overall team in Division Three Baseball, ETBU, facing the number 14 team, Trinity. Fouled off to make it two and one. Both of these teams defending conference champions. We already highlighted how ETBU won the ASC for the first time in its program history. Trinity winning the SCAC, sweeping their tournament, winning all three games. But both of these teams in interesting conferences ETBU in a very competitive conference. 
And Trinity, of course, has faced off against a couple of other teams from the ASC this year that will look to provide as much competition against these Tiger counterparts as they can. Mary Harden Baylor, who's been off to a very tremendous start this year. Of course, UT Dallas, a team that these Trinity Tigers are quite familiar with and a team that is quite familiar with taking the crown in the ASC. Pitch outside brings the count full. UT Dallas won the ASC the previous two years before ETBU won it last year. Should be an interesting battle to see which of those teams comes out on top. As that pitch misses inside and Writing takes first base. And things not coming easily against Hodges since he's come into the game for ETBU. Very hard throwing righty that has thrown quite a few strikes and played to contact in the last half inning. Right here, unable to do so as Writing shows his awareness of the strike zone, gets on using the leadoff walk right there, and Trinity tries to get back to their way of scoring runs. Hit and run could still be two, and it will be. Double play represents the first two outs of the inning. And writing on the move on that one, as you point out, I think just alludes to how hard hit this ball was. It's Burnerman out there at shortstop for ETBU, who I think paused for just a second. Sure, he heard and was alert that the runner was going, Imagine in most situations like that, not going to have a chance for two, but still had plenty of time to get the ball on to second. And that's exactly what they did. ETBU able to turn two there. So after the double play, it's Jack Peterson up in the bottom of the seventh. Foul back into the screen to make it 0-2. Peterson's reached three of his four at-bats. He's walked the last two times and singled before that. Grounded foul. Referenced it earlier, Peterson caught stealing last week against ETBU, the streak that that broke up. Haven't gotten to speak to him about that, but I'm sure that's something he's aware of. Hit in the air to right. Ranging back, not able to make the catch. And it's over the wall for a ground rule double. And hard to continue without thinking about some of the opportunity and Trinity missing out on right here as Peterson comes up and leaves the ballpark in some variety. This one bouncing off the turf here in San Antonio, which has proven to provide quite a few ground rule doubles feel like it's a higher rate this season than in years past here on Tiger Network. That double play ball, erasing runners that very likely would have scored on that hit. So that brings up Caleb Woodward working with Peterson on second base. Woodward has singled the last three times he's been up. He's reached base in all four at-bats. So he walked the other time. Pitch outside to make it 2-0. ETBU still where they want to be in the ASC. The only undefeated team remaining in conference at 6-0. Mary Harden Baylor right behind them at 7-2 in conference. Both of those teams 15-4 overall. And they play this weekend, so it's be, it'll be a very interesting matchup in that conference, and it could determine some things. Yeah, I think both in ASC play, but also in just the mapping of the region that you talked about earlier, how committees design brackets at the end of the year has heavy implications for that as well as Mary Harden Baylor certainly would like to get in via a bid if they can win their conference tournament, but have also put together a resume that at the moment would probably get a lot of teams in if they even weren't 
to win their conference tournaments. This is now Colt Harris up as Woodward draws a walk. With two down and two on. Harris two for two today. Sacrifice fly the last time he was up as he takes strike one. But UT Dallas, you would assume, also factoring into that conversation. Five and four in ASC play. 12 and seven overall. They've fallen down just a little bit since we saw them two weekends ago. But still a very competitive team out in Richardson. It's fouled off to make it 0 and 2. And you never know what Harden Simmons is going to do. 2 and 4 in the conference currently, 7 and 12 overall, but the team that ETBU had to go through last season. It's an 0-2 pitch with two outs to Harris. High ball one. Hodges certainly in the driver's seat right here. Tried to go with that fastball up in the zone. Just missed a little bit too high and inside as Harris had to back just a little bit. But imagine that's still the offering that he's going to ride on. Good breaking ball, but a good take by Harris to make it two and two. Just imagine, probably not going to be fooled with a breaking ball that catches a ton of the zone. It's probably going to be willing to lay off anything that's on the opposite side of the plate. Hit in the air to left field. And the catch is made to end the inning. So Harris is retired. That ends the seventh. We head to the top of the eighth. 9-2, to two, Trinity leads ETBU. Hunter Rimacek set to lead off this inning as he faces Luke Pfeiffer, who continues his outing. Pfeiffer, the third pitcher the Tigers have used today. Carter Aldman started this game, went point two. So that's grounded foul. Pfeiffer fields it just in case. But Aldman started this game. Jonathan Newman pitching the majority of this one in line for the win if the Tigers can hang on, and then Luke Pfeiffer coming in after Newman. Ball in the dirt, and it's one and one. Yeah, and as good as the offense has been today, I feel like you can make the argument that Jonathan Newman is probably the player of the game for this Trinity offense as Pfeiffer induces a swing and miss on that nice off-speed pitch right there. Brings the count to one and two. Outside, now two and two. Newman coming into the game. Bases loaded situation. Getting out of a jam in the first inning. Outside, and Pfeiffer in danger of walking the leadoff man. ETBU trying to continue the momentum that they built the last time they were up to bat, plating two runs in the top of the seventh. And he loses him, ball four. A leadoff walk for ETBU. It 
it's been a pretty impressive showing, I would say, from this ETBU bottom part of the order. Rumichik has been on several times today. And again, it's more or less been by any means necessary. Maybe not the most production on the scoreboard. As there's only two runs to show for it. But seven hits has certainly been supplemented in other areas. Walks drawn, hit by pitches. Swing and a miss, strike one. Now one and one to Jacob Newland. Newland, normally a catcher playing in the outfield today. So he has all games, started the game, his third start of the season. Outside, two and one. Fastball from Pfeiffer right there, just barely misses outside the zone. Looked like it was a good height. Important again, despite the success in this part of the order, come right at these hitters. Hit in the air, but there's no play. As it'll keep the count at two and two. Both of these teams, we've mentioned it a few times, nationally ranked. The Tigers fell two spots from where they were a week ago. They were at number 12 when they visited ETBU on their home field in Marshall. Fell to 14 after losing to Concordia last night. Concordia in the ASC, that brought their record to 10 and 10, a 500 mark overall. So that's fouled off out of play, keeps it at three and two. But the response from Trinity has been so incredible, especially offensively. It was so inconsistent yesterday. They had the 5-2 lead, couldn't add on to it at all. Concordia gets back into the game and wins. But already up 9-0 to start this one. As that strike three, a high pitch is what it looked like. But Newland heads back to the dugout with one down in the inning. Yeah, and it really looked like Newland as that ball was being received by riding behind home plate, it was starting to make his trek to first base. I don't think that that was a situation where he was trying to convince the home plate umpire that that one was out of the zone. I think he truly believed it. Riding, maybe helping out his staff again. He brought that pitch down just a little bit. It was a close one, certainly, in a 3-2 count. Maybe you have to do a little bit more to protect in that situation, but one way or another, it's an out on the board for Trinity. The pitch misses to make it 1-0 to Landon Duran. Take strike one. Really, at this point in the game, Two consecutive full counts Luke Pfeiffer has been a part of. I think you have to state. 9-2 ball game, really no reason trying to pitch around these batters from ETBU. Certainly a dangerous offense, but with this much of a lead and this late in the ball game, you know, so much in a position in the driver's seat to just come right at these hitters, make them truly beat you consistently barrel baseballs. It's Pfeiffer falling behind three and one. And Dave Smith, pitching coach, coming out to talk to him. And it looks like Pfeiffer stretching something on the mound. We'll see if that has anything to do with this. And it looks like that's exactly what it is. Pfeiffer continuing to work on that leg. And there had been some arms up in the Trinity bullpen and they resume throwing right now but just a couple moments ago they had all sat down there wasn't anyone getting ready to enter this ball game there's going to be some practice pitches thrown at the moment just to see if Luke, Luke Pfeiffer will be able to continue looks like Coach Dave Smith gave a head nod seems content the home plate umpire journeyed out there when he realized it was a conversation perhaps related to injury we saw something similar over a week ago with Trinity's normal Sunday starter Jackson Tier against UT Dallas. Left the middle of the game 
with an arm injury as Pfeiffer misses on that one and another walk for ETVU. As Dylan Burnerman up. Burnerman one for three today, hitting 310 on the season. Opportunity with runners on first and second, only one out in the inning. This game has continued all the way to the top of the eighth. Those of you who are just joining us, Trinity opening up a nine to nothing lead. They did all their damage in three consecutive innings. It was the third, the fourth, and the fifth. Four run spot, three run spot, two run spot. That adds up to nine. ETBU putting up two runs in the top of the seventh and now have two more aboard with one down. Burnerman ahead, 2-0, and make it 3-0 and as that pitch misses. And Pfeiffer in danger of loading the bases with only one down. And Matias Riding taking a slow walk out to the mound right now. Pfeiffer continuing to favor that leg that created a little bit of stoppage in play just a moment ago. I think more than anything else, trying to buy some time for the arms in the bullpen, allowing them just a little longer to warm. Wouldn't be surprised if we see another visit at the moment. And it looks like that's the direction this is headed. Now it looks like they're going to send another another party. Looked like a trainer was going to come onto the field just momentarily. I'm not sure if one of the umpires sent them off or what the story was there. Maybe it was Pfeiffer shaking them off himself. Pitch inside and that will load the bases as Burnerman's aboard. Still in the top of the eighth. Nine to two, Trinity. And it looks like that will do it for Luke Pfeiffer as Dave Smith comes out. He points to the, to the bullpen and signals the pitching change. Tigers will make a change, we'll take a break. 9-2 Trinity leads on Tiger Network.
A new arm in for Trinity, and it's Will Hellings. Comes in with the bases loaded, only one out, and he faces the top of this ETBU order. Connor Massimini. Hit in the air to right. Milligan checked on it, but ends up going into the Tiger bullpen. Yeah, that's been a dangerous corner this ETBU offense has taken advantage of already in this game. That one, not so much. Pretty comfortably foul that time. Strike two. Hellings, one of the Tigers' high leverage arms, didn't throw yesterday, so an opportunity to get him into the game before the weekend series against Schreiner. Swing and a miss, strike three. And Massimini is retired for the second out of the inning. Yeah, and he's high leverage because he's high velocity. He comes in straight out of the pin, three pitches needed, and that's all that's needed. Fastball there, just way too much, more than anything this ETBU squad has seen so far on the day. Now he faces Jacob Evangelista. Ball called, looked like a good pitch. Yeah, and some groans from the Trinity faithful behind home plate. Really the first time that I've heard the fans get into this one. They like the spot as much as anyone here in the ballpark. Did he go? No, and no appeal, so it's 2-0 and after two close calls. And Coach Smith taking a step onto the field right now, maybe showing some frustration. We'll see a replay right here. Hands out there, and barrel very close to breaking the plane. But again, it's a situation where the home plate umpire refused to check with the field umpire. So now a 2-0 count. Hit hard but foul, and it's 2-1. and one. As writing is going to come out to chat with Will Hellings. Maybe a discussion about what to throw next, considering base is loaded. Don't want to be relaying signs with runners on. The ability to maybe give some help to Evangelista at the plate. Dangerous two-hole hitter. Knew what was coming. Had to be a fastball in that 2-0 count right there. Just couldn't quite catch up to it. Imagine, however, he sees it again. Do a better job of getting that foot down. There's strike two. That's a perfect pitch to throw right off of it. The timing of the fastball is a little bit much. Speeding up the hands of these ETBU hitters. Got it, but wasn't going to get it again right there. And Hellings made sure to deliver, hitting the outside corner with that breaking ball. Just outside, doesn't get the call. And it's 3-2, we'll see it on the replay. And while this one certainly got the call earlier in the game, it, since that point in time, has consistently not been called a strike. So close pitch, no dice, now 3-2. Fouled back towards us, and we'll do it again. Yeah, going to be hard to beat Evangelista right here if you don't have that breaking ball pitch right on the edge of the zone at your disposal. Right now, he's showing he's not going to be overwhelmed by the fastball. You just have to spot something perfectly in on the hands if you're Will Hellings right here. Grounder to third. Tinker's throw in time, and that ends the inning. Hellings comes in with the bases loaded, and he gets out of it. 9-2, to two, Trinity still leads as we head to the bottom of the eighth.
Welcome back to San Antonio as that pitch misses for ball one. A new arm in for ETBU in a 9-2 game. Trinity has the lead. It's Ethan Brister. Fires that for strike one. It's now one and one. ETBU coming into this game 15 and four. They began the year against Pomona Pitzer, dropping that series two games of three as Monson waves at that for strike two. But since then, they've been on quite the roll. They've won 12 of 13 coming into this. Hit hard to center, and the catch is made for out number one. But ETBU has played a tough schedule. Had four losses on the year, two of them to Pomona Pitzer, the other one to Birmingham Southern, two ranked teams in the top 25. Yeah, and that's just the losses. The schedule outside of that has remained very difficult. Of course, the second time squaring off against these Trinity Tigers this season. And then I believe it was their second weekend of the year where they played a couple more teams that appear in that top 25 rather consistently. I should also mention that their other loss was against Laverne, who's also in the top 25. So all four losses against top 25 opponents, and they've continued to be on a roll. Birmingham Southern slipping a little bit in the rankings. They were number 11 at one point, falling to number 18. They just played in a series against Whitewater, who Trinity is very familiar with just from about a month ago. As Baker fouls that into the catcher's mitt. For strike two, evens the count at two apiece. And there's a lot of teams that are more than willing to try and load that schedule up. It's become the approach here pretty regularly in San Antonio over the last couple of seasons. Of course, not as familiar with this ETBU history and their scheduling history as Baker fouls this one off. But after an appearance in the World, Se World Series last year and returning Really, the majority of that squad here this season can't blame them for wanting to go through a little bit of a gauntlet in their non-conference schedule. It's, this is a team that's certainly primed to hopefully make another run for that College World Series. Baker fouls that off to stay alive in the full count. The teams we mentioned... Pomona Pitzer, number 12 in the country right now. Birmingham Southern, 18. University Wisconsin Whitewater up to number 16 in the rankings. And the Tigers hanging in there at number 14 as Baker fouls another pitch off. Some familiar names towards the top. ETBU holding strong at number 5 as Baker grounds that to short. Good throw made in time for out number 2. And then Baldwin Wallace at number three. They made the College World Series in back-to-back -back seasons with Endicott hanging on to that number one spot, 15 first-place votes. But you would assume that the path for each of these teams for a return to the College World Series, ETBU making it last year, Trinity two years before that, they might have to go through each other once again. Yeah, and that's really the most unfortunate aspect of things Things thinning out a little bit once you get to Region 10. If you're lucky enough to avoid a matchup in a regional, you're almost certain to see the other team from the region if one remains once you get to that Super Regional weekend. So that's fouled off by Hastings. Makes it 0-2. You mentioned that there is the possibility that these two teams split up if they're both powerhouses at the end of the year, which they're on pace to be very highly rated teams. And they might have to play each other in a super regional as opposed to the regional. Hastings grounds out, and that ends the eighth. We'll head to the top of the ninth. Trinity, three outs away from beating ETBU.
Will Hellings back on the mound, trying to close it out for the Tigers. Trinity three outs away from taking down ETBU. And as he faces Landon Duran, who takes strike one. Fouled off, and it's 0-2. Mentioned it earlier, the Tigers will head into weekend play after this game against Shriner, their first road series of the year. Check swing, ball one. It's a great spot from Hellings right there. Went in on the hands. Swing and a miss, that's strike three. One down in the ninth. Went in on the hands and missed just a little bit outside the zone. I think realized that next offering, these guys haven't quite been able to catch up to me. I can afford to put it in the zone. That's exactly what he does. Just overwhelming ETBU right now. It's only two outs remaining for ETBU, trying to extend the game. So that's fouled towards the Tiger dugout. Handled very cleanly by Dave Smith. It's Austin Berry into the batter's box. Down 0-1 to Will Hellings. Strike two. And Hellings coming back into the game, hoping to finish things off in the ninth. Certainly have the same desire and hope myself up here on top of the Bell Center considering the fact that the bullpen is cleared out and I think this one is on Will Hellings no matter what. Swing and a miss, strike three. And there's two away in the ninth. Tigers will head to Kerrville to face Shriner and they will play the University of St. Thomas the weekend after that. St. Thomas currently 3-0 and in the conference standings and that could prove to be a big one in the SCAC. Hit in the air, deep left field, and gone. A home run for ETBU makes it 9-3 to three as Brett Wagner leaves the yard. Yeah, and a relatively quiet statement from Wagner. There are no sounds coming from either dugouts at the moment. East Texas Baptist, I'm sure, happy about that one on the inside, but considering the fact that that still just cuts the deficit to six runs, a very contemplative dugout at the moment. The second home run Hellings has allowed this entire year, allowed one against Whitewater in a game won by himself and Joseph Shivana, that tandem that we've seen so often this year. The fourth home run of the season for Brett Wagner who adds another RBI to his total. And Wagner, who is able to catch up to that one, shows exactly what happens in that scenario. Out in front of that one, does a nice job of getting his hands through, gets a lot of barrel on the baseball, and makes it fly. Fouled off, and it's 1-2. and two. ETBU down to their final strike. After this game, they will play the University of Mary Hardin Baylor, a game for first place in the ASC. I'm sure we all look forward to that one. Just high, and it's two and two. Hellings trying to close the door. Outside, full count. Grounded foul, and we'll do it again. Yeah, just continuing to try and overwhelm Rumichik in this at bat. Lost those two previous pitches, arm side. Fix the timing right there. Rumichik able to fight it off and stay alive at three and two. Inside ball four, and he loses him. Yeah. And Maybe trying to do a little bit too much in the middle of that at bat. Ultimately just wasted a couple of pitches that I'm sure he would like to have back. Now Rumichik stands down there at first base. 
still not a very threatening situation, but Hellings, I'm sure, would like to be out of it sooner rather than later. It's fouled off. Strike one to Newland. Now working with a runner on first base, back-to-back -back ETVU batters reaching. It was Wagner by way of the home run, and now a runner on first by way of the walk. Pitch just low, and it's one and one. And that breaking ball, that spot down and away to these right-handed hitters. It's been off and on, hot and cold here in San Antonio. Strike two. The home plate umpire has certainly gone away from it in this one. Tigers trying to snap their, their mini losing streak. Came into this losing the previous two. He struck him out, and the Tigers win. 9-3 to three is your final score. A big rebound game for Trinity. Yeah, and not very frequently at this level are you going to say that it's the bullpen who gets the job done, but between Newman and Hellings, who ultimately finishes this one off, they are a huge reason as to why Trinity was able to take down ETBU here tonight. 9-3 to three is your final score from San Antonio as the Tigers respond after losing to Concordia last night. That's it from all of us here at Tiger Network. Thank you to everybody who worked cameras today. That's Reed Rosales and Adam Mann. Everyone in the control room as well. And, of course, my partner, Luke Terry. For everyone here at Trinity University, I'm Cole Isaacson saying so long from San Antonio.